Hi, welcome back to Focal Point AFR Talk. I am your host, Brian Fisher. You are listening to High Definition Radio. More content per cubic inch of air than any other place on your radio dial. That is our goal. Not saying we achieve it, but that's what we are uh, aiming at. And uh, here to help with that business is Ed Vitagliano, a journalist with the AFA Journal. Go to afajournal.org. Talking with Ed about uh, a piece that he has in the December what, what December what the December issue the issue yeah, yeah why couldn't I think of the word issue the December issue of the AFA Journal I was That's thinking because of your mind was coming was up with these article. other great things but per more uh, per cubic unit <laughs> I don't know how you come up with these great expressions <laughs> so so anyway in the December issue of AFA Journal Ed's got a great piece entitled the morally heroic in the rescue of culture and Ed what what you say in, in the first half of this piece and I want to get into the second half here is that um, what makes society strong, and this is secular researchers discovery, this what makes society strong is a commitment to monogamy. Right. When cultures have a commitment to monogamy, they become strong, they become prosperous, they become stable. Once the sexual mores begin to decline and they lapse into experimentation, to moral licentiousness, then the culture itself begins to decay and to unravel. And... What's required, and I want you to pick up here, Ed, to just kind of pick up where we, and then that there is something that can be done about that. All is not lost when right. we see a culture falling apart around us, but it does require something from those that see the problem. Yeah, and what's interesting, I, I mentioned uh, before the uh, break uh, that neither of them mentioned Christianity, and then I, I corrected myself. Sorokin actually does, and what he points out is the, uh, the uh, process of decay in the Roman Empire was well underway uh, when Christianity came on the scene. And he said for, for, uh, for 300 years, Christianity began to work in that Roman Empire. Uh, sometimes it was persecuted. Sometimes it, be, you know, in, in, in uh, 313, I think it became the official religion of the Roman Empire. Um, but the cultural impact of Christianity was such that it actually reversed the decay process of the Roman Empire. Now, of course, it eventually did collapse and was conquered from uh, from outside. Uh, but it did reverse the process. And because both of these uh, gentlemen, Unwin, the British anthropologist, and Sorokin, the founder of the sociology department at Harvard University, both of these individuals uh, answer the question that every reader of their book would ask. And that is, is there hope for a culture that is disintegrating? They both said yes. And they what they both said was that those who hold to sexual restraint and monogamy and marriage must continue to hold to those because what happens is that as the society decays and then begins to crumble, even the people who celebrated their so-called sexual revolution begin to look for solutions to their problems. And that morally heroic layer, those people are the ones that they turn to. But first... They ridicule, mock, and persecute them until it becomes evident they're on a sinking ship. And so that's where the heroism comes in. You've got to be right. prepared to endure that. And, you know, it just struck me, Ed, you know, part, part of the, the message of Christ is, you know, he came uh, not to, to be served but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. That's part of our calling is not just to lay down our lives for Christ, which is it's, it's the same dynamic, but also to realize, look, we've got a responsibility to our larger culture. We need to hold to these values both in conviction as well as in conduct because we have a culture that we want to see redeemed, and we have a part in doing that, and we need to lay down our lives being willing to uh, endure some of those slings and arrows of outrageous fortune because we're thinking of the people around us and the culture that is is decaying. And and Ed, we'll, we'll finish with this, but, but these both these guys made an observation about the people that are in the declining culture, everybody but the morally heroic, and uh, this is just the observation they make about these people is really striking to me. Yeah, in, in fact, uh, I, I quote, 
uh, here. It this doesn't make great radio, but Sorokin says most peoples and leaders of decaying societies were unaware of their cancerous sickness. It says they continued to live cheerfully in a fool's paradise and hopefully looked forward to the realization of their unrealistic dreams. Their leaders attacked all honest appraisals of the situation and called them false prophecies of doom and gloom. And we see that that, that to me is the stage we're living in right now in our culture, where those who try to lift what we see biblically as a sane voice are, are, are ridiculed, mocked, scorned. Uh, we see on television all the time Christians being mocked and ridiculed. And, and it is an uncomfortable thing to find yourself in the position of the person being scorned and mocked. And what these two secular, non-religious gentlemen said is we have got to remain faithful to these ideals because at some point, I, I would add, parenthetically, if God has mercy on our country, at some point, all these people who are blindly following the passions of their own lusts, they're going to want to know what the answer is. Christians, first of all, have to remain faithful to the truth, sexually and in marriage themselves. We can't give in to the spirit of the age. Uh, And then we have to be prepared to give an answer to point people in the right direction. Number to call if you'd like to respond to what we've been talking about here with Ed Vitagliano, 888-589-8840, 888-589-8840. And in particular, I'd like to hear from those of you in response to this question, are you willing, are you willing to be a part of that morally heroic remnant? Are you willing to do that? Are you willing to stand for our values no matter what kind of attacks uh, come against you, and if so, I want you to tell me why triple eight five eight nine eight eight four zero. And Ed, I'll just let you go here in a second. But just you know, th- this business about the the culture being sort of asleep. I-, I think the expression you use here that the majority failed to understand the dangerous path upon which they had embarked. They were at the very brink of disaster and completely uh, unaware of it. Yeah, and you, you can see that. Economically, too. Uh, this uh, last election, I think, is well, an you, indicator. You, you, that, you look at these fiscal cliff discussions. I yeah. mean, you got everybody, oh, it'll be fine. Nothing to worry about. This isn't a cliff. It's just a slope. We can handle yeah. this. No problem. No worries. Those cranks out there are saying we got to, you know, we can't increase the debt scene. They're just cranks. They're just wing nuts. They're just whack jobs. Ignore them. Everything's going to be fine. It's very, it's, I, I, I think that's human nature. Human nature doesn't like to contemplate disaster. I mean, none of us, none of us do. Um, and uh, yet when it hits, um, you know, we see a sim- saw a similar thing on, on 9-11. Uh, people are just stunned that this could have happened. And I think, I, I think morally, economically, God has been giving us l- a lot of warnings, uh, but I don't think we're paying attention. And, and this is repetitive, it's cyclical. Hmm. This is what happens to societies. We, so, we're, there's nothing. There's nothing so unique about the United States of America that we would uh, see our blindness and see our danger uh, any more quickly than any other society. The, these '80s societies that Unwin looked at. Why do we think we would see through would the be, fog? Would be the exception. We would be the exception yeah. to this pattern. These, in fact, Unwin said it is monotonous. He said, in how often this cycle repeats itself. He, he sort of got bored seeing the same pattern every culture after culture after culture. single time. He said it is monotonous in its regularity was mm. the phrase that he used. All right, Ed. Well, listen, our guest has been Ed Vitagliano, uh, author of a piece in the December issue of the AFA Journal called The Morally Heroic and the Rescue of Culture. Thanks, Ed. All right. Great piece. Appreciate you taking time to sit in All with All right. Us. Thank you, Brian. Ed Vitagliano, and I want to take uh, calls from uh, our listeners. Are you willing to be one of these, him, part of the morally heroic uh, remnant, regardless of what kind of attacks come against you? Let's grab a couple phone calls. Let's go to Lisa, Waynesboro, Mississippi. Lisa, you're on Focal Point with Brian Fisher. What's on your mind? Yes, I am willing to take a stand. Um, I just I just look around at society, and um, I see people just, you know, marriage doesn't mean anything. I've been married. 20 years, uh, well, I was married for 20 years, but because of uh, marital and fidelity, my husband, uh, the first time was like in 2002, then again in 2000 and um, 
just uh, just here, and we just got divorced uh, March of this year. Wow, well, I'm sorry but to I hear just, that, Lisa. I just think about how people just, you know, just don't take marriage seriously. And not only that, we look at, uh, we've had people that we've sat at the table with, friends, family, people in our neighborhood that, you know, you know, that have died from AIDS and we've got all these diseases and it's like, I'm like, okay, what is the deal? You know, uh, why don't you want to have a good wife or a good husband, whether um, you're saved or not? I, I just don't understand that. But we've got, to, I think us as a church that we, we do have to stand up and speak out. Um, it's not being addressed in our churches. Uh, like it should because we have a lot of young people, um, you know, that, well, that's just young people. But we have to let them know that the Bible says that our bodies are a temple mm. of the Holy Spirit and that they can withstand um, sexual more, you know, if they just just leave it to Jesus, just mm. give him power. All and right, Lisa, well, listen, I appreciate that very much, and I'm sorry, sorry to hear about the changing in your circumstances and I appreciate your willingness to keep the faith and to continue to be a, a lighthouse in the darkness. And, you know, that's the thing that strikes me in looking at Ed's piece, and, and this is, I think, where we come in. You know, what these researchers are saying, these these secular researchers are, are saying, look, there's a need for a morally heroic remnant. These would be a minority who maintain their allegiance to these principles. Now, you obviously can't make other people remain loyal to those principles but we can remain loyal to those principles ourselves in our own marriages so far as it depends upon us uh, and maintain allegiance to those even if we get laughed at for it even if we get mocked even if we get ridiculed you know one of the quickest ways the enemy has to shut us up is is ridicule because nobody likes to be made fun of nobody likes to be humiliated nobody likes to be called names nobody likes to be treated as a buffoon or as an imbecile and called those kind of names. That doesn't feel good. Nobody likes that. But I think what these guys are saying, look, if you care about your country, if you care about the United States of America, then you've got to be prepared for the sake of what we can do to recapture this culture. You need to be prepared to experience that without wavering in your obedience to God's word and your willingness to defend his truth. Focal Point AFR Talk. American Family Radio. AFR Talk. We're making a list and checking it twice. Going to find out who's naughty or nice. What stores will say Christmas this year? The annual AFA Naughty or Nice